Greetings, NJRoot22.com here with a new kind of vlog today. We're going to start talking about wines that you can pick up in the area here. Um, this is called uh, Cheap Wine Reviews. And uh, before we get started, uh, let me just get rid of my, my little promotional uh, flyer here. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about what I think about the wine industry in general. Um, it's, uh, I find it fascinating because I think a lot of, of what goes into wine is, is into the marketing of a wine. In the same way, um, like for instance, uh, like there's reviews and all this, this fancy wording on every bottle of wine and they talk about the notes and the finish and what it pairs with. It kind of reminds me of like the art industry, you know. You know how like some artists uh, over time build a reputation and you know and they were they were struggling artists and their and their their works went for 20 bucks and then they they schmooze and they kiss butt and then they work their way around they hobnob and and uh eventually they 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 kiss ass enough long enough in the industry that uh, they and they pat enough people's pockets along the way that uh, that their art all of a sudden becomes worth more i guess it's just this weird framework in how how stuff like like art works and i think wine is the, sort of the same thing how certain wineries and and they they've been in the industry for so long and certain families and so on and they they build this reputation up where like people who buy the wine don't really think about it anymore they just they just are programmed in their head that oh this is a better wine but keep in mind that wine is is subjective okay and the purpose here for this this new wine series, I don't know how often I'm going to do it, maybe once a week. Um, I'm going to talk about a particular brand of cheap wine. Uh, we're going to talk about how, how it makes us feel. Like, for, for instance, you know, like the marketing, I want to get back to the marketing. The marketing of stuff like, let's say, Red Bull. It's, they had this whole marketing... Uh, thing associated with it. It gives you energy and this and that and, and people buy this stuff up. It's just addictive chemicals and it doesn't, it's not even good for you. I don't even know what the, the taurine comes from, like some sort of animal part. I don't know. Um, but what I want to talk about is how, how we rate wines. Um, it's not about the taste because that everything is subjective. You may think one thing because you read the bottle or just some friend of yours, some wine snob told you about this great wine. Wine is an individual experience and for us it's much less about the actual taste because I don't think food has to be complicated. Wine for us is about the effects it has on our body. Um, I like to get a nice buzz from the wine. It makes me feel good. Okay. Now, the flavor has a, a minor role in it. Obviously, if the wine tastes like crap, I'm not going to continue buying it, and, or drinking it for that matter. And secondly, we, we'd like to drink a fairly substantial amount of wine. So we, we judge a quality of wine, the quality of a wine, based on how we feel the next day. And What's important here, oh and lastly, the cost. I don't want to spend $30 or $50 on a bottle of wine. I don't think the experience is proportional to how much you pay for it. Um, so, that said, we have three simple criteria. Like, does it taste acceptable? I mean, uh, yes, yeah, some wine has a little bit more depth, so to say. I mean, I don't even know if I would even say that if I didn't know that type of terminology existed. I wouldn't say, oh wow, this wine has, it starts this way, it lingers on my tongue, that, that. Yes, it, it, when you think about it, anything has ling lingering flavors, like from fruit to, to meat to vegetables, I don't know. I mean, can you really apply that same taste? They're just taste buds in the end. You can't really apply that, that uh, philosophy to everything. I mean, I don't know, then it seems kind of invalid if that's not true. Either way, Red wine has a general taste. I'm not going to say, oh, it tastes like plum, it tastes like uh, like cinnamon, it tastes like nutmeg. I mean, I don't don't really care. You know, everybody has their own personal preference. So the taste is is as long as it doesn't taste like crap. I mean, you could tell there's there's a line in the sand where you, you can say, wow, this this really has a weird. Uh, like it tastes like turpentine, or or it's too liquidy, or you know, I don't know, or juicy. Again, personal preference and. 
how we feel the next day, and of course the cost. I don't like spending more than $10 a, a 750 milliliter bottle ever. The closer to $5 a bottle, the better for us. I mean, it, it's just, that's the way it is. It's an economic factor. Um, but how you, we're, we're coming up with a baseline here, and I'm a big guy, and, and my baseline is two, two bottles is my, baseline because I know I've, I've drank many two bottle sessions or two bottle uh, drinking nights where you know I feel fine the next day and then there's other two bottle depending on the wine I'll feel pretty pretty shoddy so the two bottle limit is my my line in the sand because you can drink one bottle or I can drink one bottle of any wine and feel perfect the next day it doesn't matter how cheap or expensive it is but if I drank three bottles of any wine I guarantee you I'm not going to feel well the next day. So two bottles is my is my uh, my my barometer. Your barometer may be different. If you're a hundred pound woman, it might be a, a, three quarters of a bottle or four glasses of wine, depending on how how you pour it up. And uh, lastly, I don't drink wine the way most people do, and this is going to uh, make some people so upset. I water it down and I put ice in it. So, because I feel hydration is important. Um, I get at least the amount of, of water I drink. So if I drink a 1.5 uh, bottle, then I'm gonna drink 1.5 or more of water. Sometimes it's d double the amount. So I'll drink three liters of water uh, to the 1.5 liters of wine. That's that's a lot of, uh, a lot of wine for sure. But, so, you, you have to come up with your own personal baseline to, to truly be able to review which wines are good for you. And these, I mean, I'm gonna be reviewing these two wines in the upcoming weeks, as well as stuff like this. This is a, a bottle, I think it was like $5.99. Um, that, that, those are our criteria. Your criteria may be different, but I guarantee you that it's all that fluff and all that marketing is, is really just a psychological trick to get you to spend more money on a, a fancier bottle of wine. It, it, it's, it's, I don't, I don't buy it for one second. Um, there are some things to be considered though, however, I mean, I, I'm gonna try and get to the bottom of it, but some of the cheaper wines may have some added additives to them, color and or flavor or both. Um, and and that that's something I'm, I'm a little concerned with. I mean, I'd rather have a pure wine. I mean, that's, that's a purist, uh, uh, mindset, but I like Spanish wines, uh, Spanish wines or Portuguese, South America, that type of stuff. Um, but you keep keep an eye. Out. I'm gonna give some real, real, just fundamental, you know, pragmatic wine reviews. There's gonna be no fancy. Oh yeah, this is this way, this is that way. That's not true. It, it's I think I don't buy into it for one bit. So hopefully, um, you know, we're gonna talk about the differences between box wine and bottled wine and screw tops. I mean. I don't think, I think we've been fooled long enough with all these fancy wine reviewers and, and bloggers and vloggers that talk about wine when it really comes down to is, is it a piece of crap, am I going to feel like crap, and was it affordable? So that's it. So hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, new series about wine and affordable cheap wines. Have a nice week ahead.